Hi, my name is Ileana. Welcome to The Mix, the Teen Center at the San Francisco Public Library. I'm your hostess with the mostest for our STEM Challenge Yourself series, where our fantastic librarians will be doing some science experiments that you can try at home. A lot of people were trying out their hand at baking and cooking this last year, so we're gonna do the science behind a sourdough starter. I think you're ready for the challenge. Take it away, Davey. Well, hi everyone, my name is Davey. I'm a librarian here at the San Francisco Public Library. Now, I love fermented foods, and what fermented food is more iconic to San Francisco than sourdough bread? Now, I've heard you need something called a sourdough starter to make sourdough bread, and lately I've been wondering how I could make my own sourdough starter. Well, today's challenge is to make a living, breathing sourdough starter. So, let's get started. We're gonna need some flour. We're gonna need some water. We're gonna need a, a jar or a container, something glass probably would be good. We're going to need a breathable lid, like a piece of cloth or even a paper towel, and something to secure it, like a rubber band. All right, then all we need is some time. All right, first things first, it's important to start this project with clean hands. I washed my hands right before I started, but make sure you wash your hands first. And I'm gonna start out with my jar. I'm gonna be using a pint-sized jar for this, but feel free to use a larger jar if you want. Uh, you don't have to use this, but I like to use a funnel just to make things a little cleaner. Totally not necessary, but I will be using one right now. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure out one cup of flour. Now this is a half cup, so I'm gonna do two of these. It doesn't have to be exact, just do your best. All right, next I'm gonna measure out half a cup of water. And I'm gonna add that to my mixture. Wonderful. All right, so you don't have to use a full cup of flour or a half a cup of water, but what you do have to do is get the ratio correct. So if you wanna use a smaller batch, you can have this or even a quarter it, just make sure you get the right ratio. Uh, I've heard some people that like to use a one to one water flour ratio when making their starter, but I like it a little more with one cup of flour to one half a cup of water, all right? And now all I have to do is stir this up with my fork. I'm gonna be looking for a texture, maybe similar to pancake batter. You're gonna to wanna to stir it up nice and good. Make sure all the flour is incorporated in. Part of why you need to have clean hands is in case you have to touch your mixture, you wanna make sure you don't put anything weird in there. Eh, mine's a little tough, so I might add a little bit of more water. That's okay if you need to add a little bit more to make your ratio good. Oh yeah, that's way better. All right, and we are all set. This is our first step and it has been complete. We are hoping that in this weird little flower water mixture we have created is going to turn in to our sourdough culture, all right? A culture is another word for a starter. So all I have to do now is put on a breathable lid so, so some things can get on, but not everything. And I'm gonna use a hanky right here, all right? It's really important that this is able to breathe. I'm gonna use a hanky and a rubber band. And our starter is all set, all right? Now that our sourdough starter is set up, all we have to do is wait. We're gonna let it sit for at least 24 to 48 hours uh, while we wait for it to activate. But while we wait, let's figure out what is going on. Well, 
A sourdough starter is a culture of microorganisms. We are hoping that our starter is going to catch some of the microbes like yeast and bacteria floating around in the air. Those microbes will start to eat the sugars in the flour, allowing them to reproduce rapidly. Now, the two most important microbes to a sourdough starter are yeasts and bacteria. Yeast is a single-celled organism that adds to the leavening power of bread, but also adds to its flavor and smell. Yeast helps bread become leavened by converting carbohydrates into ethanol and carbon dioxide in a process known as alcoholic fermentation. The addition of carbon dioxide, CO2, is what helps bread get those big, fluffy air pockets that we love so much. Now, lactic acid bacteria, on the other hand, also converts carbohydrates into, this time, lactic acid, which lowers the pH of the mixture. This creates an acidic atmosphere in the culture, which helps kill unwanted pathogens, and in which good yeast can thrive. By becoming more acidic, the sourdough culture can extend a bread's shelf life, and it can aid in the creation of those good sour flavors. Now, check your starter after about 24 hours for bubbles to see if it's been activated. If you don't see any bubbles, don't worry, that's fine. Just wait another day. My starters usually take at least two days to activate. Well, some starters will become active after a day. Maybe it's really warm and you have a great kitchen. Others can take up to a week, depending on how hot it is and the microbes in your area. Now, I want to give you all a warning that sometimes in these early stages, your starter might smell. You might get some pockets of brown liquid. That's totally, totally normal. Just keep powering through. All right, well, I made a sourdough starter a couple of days ago for this, all right? And we're going to see what it looks like after it's been activated, okay? So here is a starter that is 48 hours old, all right? If you can see closely, it's full of bubbles, it smells a little bit, it's growing, and it is, oh, it's alive, all right? But like anything that's alive, we have to feed it, all right? We have to feed it. So the first things first with sourdough culture, is I'm gonna have to take some of it and throw it out. All right, I'm gonna take, whew, I'm gonna take about half of this mixture. Ooh, check out, it's all foamy. And I'm gonna throw it out uh, in the compost. I just wanna warn you, this stuff is sticky. All right, so it'll mess up your compost container if you're not careful. So I'm gonna take about half of it. Ooh, and I'm gonna throw it into my little trash bin right here. Very nice. And now I'm gonna feed it by doing just what I did before, all right? I'm gonna add flour and water. That same exact ratio that I was using earlier. So I'm gonna add back in another cup of flour. This is my half cup, so I'm gonna use two of these. And I'm gonna add in another half cup of water. And just like before, I'm going to give it a good stir, all right? This is feeding your starter, all right? After it's been activated, you're gonna need to feed your starter pretty much every day, all right? So I'm gonna stir that around right now. Let's make sure we get this mixture good and mixed. Now you'll notice my jar is getting pretty dirty when I'm making this. Uh, if you are the kind of person that likes a clean jar, you can re-jar it every time you feed it, but you don't have to do that just yet if you don't want to. All right, we are now all fed. The general rule once your starter is activated is you gotta feed it every 24 hours, but, but really you just have to feed it when it's hungry. So you'll notice now that it's active, it's gonna start growing a little bit while it's feeding. When it's done feeding, it's gonna shrink back down. It's gonna go up and it's gonna go down. You know your starter is hungry 
when it has gone down, all right? And that's when you need to feed it. So you might find yourself feeding it twice a day. You might find yourself feeding it every other day. It just depends on how hungry your sourdough gets. All right. Now, after somewhere between five days to a week of feeding, depending on how warm your space is, you're gonna notice that your culture doubles in size after a feed before deflating back to its normal size. You're also gonna know it's getting kind of spongy. You're gonna see a lot of air bubbles in there. And you're also gonna notice that the smell is, it's not gonna be so funky anymore. Instead, it's gonna be a little sweet and nice smelling. That's when you know your starter is complete, all right? This starter uh, is one that I've had going for a couple of weeks, and I just wanna poke it so you guys can see how marshmallowy and it, good it looks once we open it up, all right? So that's a nice, soft texture, and this starter is complete. Congratulations, folks. You now have your very own sourdough starter. <sighs> well, since you're feeding it, I think it's a good idea to give your starter a name. It's a really, 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 really good way to make sure you stay connected. So I'm gonna call my starter Waffles because I am going to make some sourdough waffles with it. All right, so once our starter's done, if you wanna use it every day, keep it on your counter. Feed it every day and you'll be able to use it. If you're only gonna use it sometimes, you can keep it in your fridge uh, and it'll live a little longer, all right? You only need to feed it about once a week once you have it in the fridge. Uh, I wanna share one more cool fact. Once we have a complete starter and we are at the feeding process, you don't actually have to throw away the starter. You can actually create another starter with that. In fact, every time you feed it, you can double it and make a new starter if you want. I only need one, so I don't do that, but if you are gonna do a lot of baking, that is totally possible. All right, well, just so you know, it is possible for your starter to die. If you leave your starter alone for a while, it might start to change colors, it might get a little funky, and you might have to start over. That's okay. It only takes about a week to make a new starter, so that shouldn't be a problem. But, 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 if you ever decide to try, you might be able to revive your starter, okay? This starter, I actually let it die for about a week, and I was able to bring it back to life simply by feeding it for three days. Oh, that's pretty nice to know. This, it's pretty reassuring to know that I can bring this thing to life if I wanna do it. So what am I gonna do with mine? Well, I'm obviously gonna make waffles, right? I named it waffles, so I'm gonna make some sourdough waffles, but I'm not a huge baker, so I'm probably not gonna bake bread. I'll probably just make some, some sourdough pizza or some sourdough pancakes or waffles, something like that, just something good with some tang. Uh, you don't actually have to use your starter to make bread. You could use it in anything that uses flour to get yourself a nice, tangy flavor. All right, I hope you've had a great time creating your sourdough st starter today. And with that, I'm gonna kick it back to Liana. Wow, Davey, a sourdough starter is definitely the gift that keeps on giving. I love that you can learn a little bit of science, a little bit of history, and just practice some patience as you wait for that sourdough starter to go. If you want to find out more about how this challenge goes or other challenges, be sure to visit sfpl.org slash STEM challenge. Stay STEMtastic and keep experimenting.